ResaCalc is a web-based application for individual component design, which provides engineers with an easy-to-use interface. It allows for full control over inputs, such as geometry and loading, in addition to graphical and numerical results, including robust detail reports. In this video, we will take a look at the drilled concrete pier component in ResaCalc. So to get started, I can begin a new project and select Drilled Pier from the Foundation Elements list or I could hit Add Component and insert this component into an existing project that I already have. As is the case with most Risa Calc components, I want to start with the Settings tab and make sure that I've got my codes and other settings in alignment. So I do have a specific code setting for the concrete drilled pier, as well as some rebar options, the minimum and maximum steel ratio specific to the drilled pier. I'm good with the defaults there. Hit OK, and we'll get started with the input. I'm simply going to work my way through the four input tabs here, starting with general properties. Start with my material strength. This indicates 4,000 PSI normal weight concrete. We've got some built-in concrete strengths in there. Or you can input a custom material strength of your choosing. Let's stick with 5,000 PSI normal weight. I'm going to input a pier diameter. Let's use 30 inches to start up here height of 20. I can choose whether or not to have a bell at the end of this foundation. So let's go ahead and do that. Input my diameter, say 72 inches, and then the angle of the bell as well as the toe thickness. And that combined with the diameter is going to create the additional length that we see here. Note that I can edit any of these dimensions by simply clicking on them and it jumps to the appropriate line in my input. Lastly, allowable soil pressure that we get from our geotechnical report. Let's stick with 10 KSF, that sounds good. The next tab is going to have some design options for us. I can input a specific unbraced length if I want it to be different from the overall pier height, as well as a CM factor, a customizable K factor, the CM factor is an oil or buckling factor that does get ignored if you choose to have this pier subject to sway. But I'll leave that unchecked for now. Next, let's input our reinforcement. So what we're going to do is set up a minimum and a maximum for the flexural bar size that we want the program to pick from. So for example, I might want to go all the way down to number sixes. And let's say on the high end, I think anything bigger than the number 11 is going to be pretty huge. So I'll cap that as my maximum bar size. The shear reinforcement, I can set the tie size, let's say number four, two legs per tie, sounds good to me. And then I can manually input the spacing or I can have this be optimized as well. And then of course we can enter in a clear cover. Let's adjust that to three inches for this particular model. And again, note that all of this information is visible on the screen. I can jump to it by simply clicking where I see it. I can also jump back to one of the other tabs as well. Finally, let's input our forces. So I'm simply going to say add force. And we're going to put these in in category groups. So I've got axial shear and moment that is applied within a specific loading category here. So to get started, let's do an axial load of 250 sounds great. Shear load of 10. Let's just change this moment to, oh, say, 215. Close that. I can add another force. Let's change this one to be a wind load. And maybe this generates some uplift. I put an uplift by making that value negative, negative 75. A little more shear load in the wind case, 50, and of course a little more moment as well, let's say 525. Notice that the load combinations list is being automatically populated depending on the category codes that I've selected for my load inputs. These load combinations, if I hit the gear wheel for the settings, they are generated according to the code of my selection. And then like I said, changing the category from within here will create a different set of load combinations depending on the code requirements. All right, 
Let's hit solve and view our results. So I get a summary code check up here of 99.6%. It was a very efficient design that got done. And I've got my detail report, which I can expand by hitting the arrow buttons here. We get the echo of our input, the categories used, and finally, the expandable calculation set. This is where I can view what's going on with the flexural, the bending unity checks that are being done according to the ACI code that I selected, as well as checking that my allowable bearing strength, of course, is within the maximum that I set. Looks like we're right on the money with that as well. I can also expand the rebar detailing and see the column interaction diagram for the pier and then the results of my rebar. I ended up with 14 number nines equally spaced in this circular pattern with the clear cover that I had set. I can round this project out by downloading the report for it, pick and choose the sections that I may want, and that's going to generate a PDF which you can hand in to your reviewer. Open up this PDF, and we see the summary of what we just did. For more information about RISA Calc, please visit RISA.com.